So today I wanna to show you guys how easy it is to install some hydraulic brakes on your e-bike. Maybe you're in a situation like my father-in-law is where his e-bike has mechanical disc brakes and something has gone wrong with the calipers. So in his situation, since he needs to replace them anyways, we're better off going from mechanical to a set of hydraulics. Now these are a really good setup to go with. They're Zoom hydraulic brakes and they are designed for e-bikes. They have the cutoff switches built into them. They come in right around $120 for a full set and these come with 180 millimeter rotors. It should have almost everything you need to get these installed. There are a few things, and I'm gonna show you guys those as we go along in the video. So let's go ahead and take off his old brakes, and then we can start the process of installing these brand new hydraulic brakes. So the first thing we're gonna do is take these levers off. So we have to remove the grips, the side mirror, the little control panel right here that's for the lights and the horn. And then also let's go ahead and remove some of this wrapping right here that you see on all these e-bikes. This is gonna be your brake line, which in this case is just a cable housing with a cable running through it. And then right here is your cutoff switch. Now, whenever you go to replace your brakes, you're gonna to wanna to make sure whether you're a two pin or a three pin, in this particular case, my father-in-law's bike has a two pin. It's real simple. You just pop these little cables, they pull apart. You can look inside and you can see how many pins you have. If you have a three pin, you just need to make sure you order the appropriate three pin brake setup. So in order to get this part off right here, we need to actually go down to the caliper and disconnect the cable. And since we're getting rid of this cable, I'm just gonna go ahead and snip it right here before the caliper. So normally you wouldn't cut the cable like that. You would undo this screw and then you would replace a new cable with it and then be good to go. But in this particular case, these calipers are no longer good. We're just gonna be throwing these away. So I just left that cable attached. Easier just to go ahead and cut all this stuff. Now we can pull this cable housing up and then we can start pulling it up through the top of the bike. So now your cable housing can come up through here. Okay, at this point, we are fully ready to go ahead and remove the caliper and the adapter. So just go ahead and undo these two bolts right here, and both the adapter and the caliper will come off at the same time. And there you go, the caliper is fully removed and we're ready to replace it with a new caliper. We just have to replace the disc on the wheel. So in this particular setup, it is a six bolt rotor, and you can tell that by these six bolts going around the rotor right here. But let's go ahead and remove this one. In this particular instance, it's using a standard four millimeter Allen key. Sometimes you'll find these bolts are gonna be non Allen key bolts, but in this particular case, these are Allen key. Let's go ahead and get these removed. All right, before we replace those rotors, let's go ahead and open up the Zoom disc brake box here and show you guys what all comes in here. So you do get a little bit of a manual. Looks like you're going to get a few different types of adapters based off of what you need. So most bikes require an adapter based off the rotor size that they have. In this particular case, we've got adapters, but I'll probably wind up using these brand new ones uh, if possible. So we'll set these aside. Looks like you also get a few zip ties. And then here is our first lever. Now, if you're familiar with hydraulic disc brakes, you'll kind of see that this kind of resembles a Shimano look and feel, the, specifically the MT200s. The nice thing is, is that these Zoom brakes, they use the same oil that Shimano uses. So it's just mineral oil, it's not corrosive. It's really easy to find, super easy to replace. But here is where your hydraulic hose is gonna go. And then right here is your cutoff switch for your motor, and this is a two pin setup. So right here, we're getting into the actual caliper and hose setup, and it looks like the hose is already pre-attached to the caliper, so we're gonna wanna run from the caliper side up to the actual brake. And it looks like they already put an adapter on there, so we'll see if this is the right adapter, and we may have to switch over to the other ones. But they did put a nice little cap on the end, so this is gonna make it super easy to run through the frame. And then we should just be able to pop the barb and the olive on there. Although there may be a barb already in there, which that would be really nice if there is. Hopefully we don't have to cut this hose. If we do, there is just a little bit more process, but hopefully this is the right length. 
Now these are four piston calipers, which are gonna be really nice for my father-in-law because these are gonna help stop even better than a two piston caliper. And it looks like we've got all of our different bits. We've got the olives right here. So the barbs must be pre-installed. We've got the caps. And then we've got some bolts here that will attach the calipers. And it looks like they do have some thread locker on them. And then here are the rotors. My suggestion, whenever you get these rotors out, do not touch the actual disc part here. Always keep your hands right here. You wanna keep as much oil and grease off of these because if you have too much oil or grease on this, it's gonna contaminate the pads. And with resin pads, if they get contaminated, they're very hard to get back. You can do things like sand the pads down, heat them up, do all kinds of different things. But sometimes it's just, you're just better off not touching the actual disc portion whenever you go to install this. Installing the rotor is really easy. You just always put the text facing outwards and then just slide it on right there. And then we're gonna use our fresh bolts since they have a nice set of Loctite already pre-installed. So we'll just go ahead and pick out six of these bolts and we'll start to get them installed. Now Zoom doesn't list the recommended torque for their bolts, but since this resembles Shimano, I'm gonna go ahead and torque it down to Shimano specs, which is between two and four Newton meters. Okay, now that the new rotor is put on and it's torqued down properly, let's go ahead and reinstall the front wheel. First thing we wanna do is install this 180 millimeter adapter. You're gonna put the small side down with the small post and the long side with the long post. That seems opposite, but that's the correct way to do it. Let's go ahead and install that. Now we can install our caliper. Just make sure that the hose is pointed up towards the top of the bike. So when installing the adapter, we're gonna go ahead and fully tighten down those bolts but whenever we go to install the caliper, we're gonna leave them slightly loose because we're gonna need them loose for the step whenever we go to center the caliper on the rotor. We've got our caliper on, our rotor on, our adapter on. We've got it a little bit loose so we can adjust it here in a little bit. We can run this hose up to the handlebar now. Now, whenever you go to run your hydraulic hose, do not run it on the outside of the bike. You wanna run it on the inside between the fork and the wheel because if you fall over and hit this on a rock, you could damage this hose where if it's in here, it's protected at all times. So then you're gonna run it up here and then you should have a little spot that you can either run a zip tie or that actually holds the cable. You're gonna just pull that through or zip tie it and just pull it all the way through until it looks pretty tight. All right, now that we've got the hose all the way up here before we disconnect anything, let's go ahead and install a few things. We've got this little end cap right here. You'll slide that on first. And then this guy right here, which will be able to be threaded into the actual lever, just slide that on. So now we can take our lever and we can just slide it onto the handlebar. Should slide on nice and easily. And hopefully this will prevent any fluid from coming out. So don't have it fully tightened down just a little bit. Now, when you go to install this olive, just make sure that this is pushed on the hose really well because you can crush these if you're not careful because it's just a brass material. And then slide the hose up in here and just kind of push it a little bit. You may start to get a little bit of mineral oil coming out, but don't worry, it's just mineral oil on these brakes, so no big deal. And you'll use an eight millimeter wrench to start tightening in this little nut right here. And if all works, this should push that olive in place on both the lever and on the actual hose itself. So now that we've installed the olive and the hose and we've tightened it down, let's do a quick check for leaks before we clean everything up. So at this point, I did lose a little bit of fluid when installing this front brake, so I do need to do a lever bleed. The lever bleed is really simple. I use a kit called Easy MTB. This is a really nice kit that I'll put some links below. And basically, it's got everything you need for just about every brand to do a proper bleed on your brakes. Now to do a lever bleed, it's really simple. I do have a longer video that's actually out there. I'll put a link right here so you guys can check it out if you would like. But we simply just remove the bleed port that's on top of the lever, 
We install the proper adapter for the cup that's gonna go on top. We fill it with fluid, and then we are gonna go through the bleed process at this point. All right, these feel pretty good. I'm gonna go ahead and put the plunger back in. And now we can remove this bleed cup and then put the uh, bleed port screw back in. Just don't squeeze the lever after this. Make sure that you, you wanna keep this as full as possible. Now you can go ahead and wipe off the excess mineral oil. And I recommend using some isopropic alcohol also on your cloth just to make sure that it's fully cleaned off. Just give your lever a little squeeze, make sure no fluid is coming out of any of the ports that you have uh, had open. All right, so now we can go back down to our caliper because we're going to actually do the centering of the caliper on the rotor. So the first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is squeeze your lever and hold it. This might take two people to do this job, but the front brake, it's a little bit easier. So while you're holding the lever, go back down to your caliper and start tightening down those bolts to attach the caliper. What this basically is doing is it's locking in the centering of this caliper on the fork to the rotor. So whenever you do start riding your bike, you don't hear any weird rubbing and the pads don't wear unevenly. All right, I got everything put back together on the front brake, the mirror, the grip. I got the uh, light switch and horn put back in place and then I locked in the angle that I want the lever for the uh, front brake. Now we're ready to install the back brake and this is really, really similar. The caliper is gonna basically install the exact same way. The only difference on this frame is that there is some internal routing and there's a little trick. Don't pull your cables all the way out. Use some electrical tape, tape the new hydraulic cable to the end of the old cable and then pull it through your frame. This will make your life a lot easier when installing internal cabling. Now, one thing you may run into and I ran into it on this bike is the hose is way too long for this bike. So I did have to cut the hose. And whenever you do that, you can't reuse the barbs. So if you do wind up cutting your hydraulic hose and you have to pick up an extra barb, you can pick up a Shimano BH-59 style barb and that will fit perfectly in these zoom brakes. Now, when it comes to installing these barbs, you can do it by hand. And here's a prime example of how I do it by hand. I just used a soft end of a wrench and then used a pair of needle nose pliers and lightly tapped it into the hose. This will work just fine, but you wanna be extra careful because you can wind up just like with a nail, bending that barb. The best thing you can do is to use an actual barb inserting tool. This will actually cut the hose right here with a little blade. And then this will also install the barb nice and smoothly. I'll put some links below to this particular one. These are super cheap. So if you're gonna be doing this install yourself, I would just go ahead and pick one of these up. So there you go, that's how you install hydraulic brakes on any bike, but especially an e-bike in this case. Now, before you go out on a ride, make sure that your motor cutoff switches are connected properly. And you also wanna go ahead and bed in those brakes. If you're not familiar with how to bed in disc brakes, well, I've got a video right here and I've also put it in the description and it'll show you exactly how to go through the bed in process. So these hydraulic brakes will stop you on a dime. And I went ahead and put some links down below to everything that I use to get these brakes installed properly. And if you have any questions, just leave them down in the comments. I'll be happy to answer them for you. All right, guys, we'll see you in the next one.